Hi, good morning, everybody. How are you? It is eight o'clock in the morning. I've been up since 4 a.m. because of booger. <laughs> My freaking cat. <laughs> Why do I have to get up at four in the morning? Why is it so important? There's nothing to do at four in the morning. It's just ungodly hour. Anyway, so I hope you guys enjoyed the tarot reading that I did last night. It was quite interesting, although the cards told me and stuff that I already knew and I suspected they just basically confirmed it but I hope you guys enjoyed the tarot reading anyway so I wanted to do something a little different today it is foodie related it's not me reacting to one of her mukbangs I wanted to go back through the time of history with foodie beauty go all the way back to the beginnings of her channel and do kind of a retro react to some of her former material and I wanted to do it because in her latest video she showed her grocery haul where she bought an excessive ungodly ridiculous amount of cheese like 15 packs of cheese sliced cheese different kinds of cheeses uh, she even had her infamous shaky cheese in there Th that's not counting the huge jar of Nutella and seven or eight bottles of juice. Most of the things that were on the table were completely unhealthy for her. But I wanted to do a retro react to show the history of Foodie Beauty and her bad food choices and how she just has flip-flopped over and over and over again with going from caring about her health, doing things like water fasting, to flipping over and like suddenly she doesn't care about her health she just she i mean what can you say she just can't stay on a path long enough for any change to occur you know like one day she cares about her health the very next day it's a whole different story so there's a lot of things on foodie beauty's channel that are missing those of us that have reacted to foodie long enough for those of you that are viewers that have been around long enough you know that chantal is infamous for deleting content she's deleted hundreds and hundreds of videos so a lot of stuff is not on our channel anymore and those that are new beezers they have no real idea of who she is or about her cycles of her starts and stops with her journey so I'm doing this video to kind of give some history about how unhealthy Foodie is and how unhealthy she's always been. So I want to start out with showing a clip from a video that is still on her channel. And the title is Day 25 Early Weigh-In. That was the last time she gave a true, authentic, genuine, sincere weigh-in. So let me just pull that up really quick and show it to you. So, okay. Let me just pull that up here. Okay, so that is the screenshot right there. I stopped the video for anybody who's wanting to do your own homework, do your own research on Foodie, and you're just wanting to go back behind me and see if I'm just pulling stuff out of the air. There you go. It's still on her channel. The title is Day 25, Early Weigh-In. And when was this video posted? Let me give you the date. This was five years ago. Five years ago. And you can see the number on the scale, 374 pounds. So five years ago, she was almost at 400 pounds. What's funny is that here we are, you know, years later, and she's claiming to be at a lower weight than what she was here. During this time period, she was with her ex-boyfriend, Bibi. Uh, so that was years and years and years ago. But she was very, very close to the 400-pound mark. But recently, she's claiming that she's under 400 pounds. She did make a slip before and say that she was 535 pounds in my personal opinion she's by looking at her comparing screenshots and pictures of her from videos of her like say from this one 
to how she looks now, I would say she's gained at least 150 pounds. So she's perhaps in the neighborhood of 550 pounds, perhaps even more, uh, but I could be wrong. The only way to know for sure is if Foodie went to a actual doctor's office and she stood on a scale that she absolutely could not mess around with and manipulate the weight number. So for those who are Beezers or anybody else who's curious, there's a screenshot, 374 pounds. And, and just to make sure that you guys know that this is off her video, I'm gonna play her voice. She's not talking. Hey guys. Okay, so there she is. There's Chantal. You can see how she looks. And again, compare how she looks right here from five years ago to how she looks now. It's a, it's so night and day. The Chantal just five years ago, how she looks today. Today, she looks very, very ill, very, very sick. Uh, there's no life in her at all. You know, she, she, she looks very uncomfortable, very swollen. Uh, what a difference five years can make. But yeah, that was the last true weigh-in that she gave. Because every weigh-in after that, she messes around with the scale. She will pull the weight back about 70 to 100 pounds. And that was confirmed when Pete himself, after Foodie was gone, he showed everybody the scale and the fact that the scale was off by 100 pounds. So Foodie, after a while, she stopped telling the truth about her weight. And she started telling a bunch of lies. And for some strange reason, some really strange reason, for some reason, she's obsessed with the 300s. She doesn't want to tell people that she's over 400 pounds, like 425, 450. It's always in the 300s when clearly she's not in the 300s. So now that you've seen that, now that that's over, let me just go ahead and get that off. And... What else do I want to show you? Okay. So the next thing I'd like to show you before we get into the actual videos is I went on to Chantal's channel because anybody has been reacting to Chantal or watching Chantal, then we're all familiar with the flip-flopping. You know, one minute going on the health journey, claiming to care about her health. The next minute she's off the health journey and she's eating carbs and she's eating her fast food and she's defending it. You know, like the constant back and forth, back and forth, back and forth, uh, just trying to pull in different kinds of people to her channel. Like try to pull in people that are interested in their health. At the same time, she's catering to those who have the food fetish, just trying to pull in different audience members and get them into her, but not really committing to her health at the same time. So let me just share the screen again. And again, I went straight to her channel. Let's see. I'm, I'm, I'm looking for, there we go. I found it. So let's, let's just take a, a quick scroll through her channel. And all I did was put in the search foodie beauty health. That's it. I, I didn't put in a specific date. I just put in foodie beauty health. So this is her newest video, Health Updates and Huge Grocery Haul. Okay, here's another one from two years ago, Life and Health Updates. She, she claimed to, got, to care about her health two years ago. Here's another one from four years ago. She was with BB. And for those who do not know the history of her and BB, she was with BB. And she really got into the fast food to the point where she had to go to the ER because she ate entirely too much cheese. Also, for those who are not aware, Chantal does not have a gallbladder. She had hers removed. So really, she should not be eating cheese at all. But yet, that's one of her trigger foods. That's one of her favorite foods. So like, she just can't stay away from cheese. And in the newest video, like I said, she bought 10, no, 15 packs of cheese. It's insane. Like, it's something that she should not be doing. But life and health updates, uh, again, here's another one from four years ago. Health updates. Uh, five years ago, huge health and food grocery haul from Bulk Barn. 
then she tried to kind of marry the two worlds of eating healthy, but still going to get the fast food. You know, trying to act like she can get fast food and make it healthy. Although I would think if you've got a BED or you've got any problem with food, especially fast food, going to a fast food restaurant would be an absolute no-no. Because if you drive up to the window or you walk up to the front of the store and you're smelling the burgers, you're smelling the fries, just the smells alone would trigger you. You know, like the little side note about me, it's not about me, but I'm just going to say something. For those of you who don't know, I have a BED in recovery and I won't even buy candles that smell like food because I don't want to be triggered to eat something sweet or eat something I'm not supposed to. So I buy candles that smell like anything other than food. I don't want to be tempted to eat something I really shouldn't have. So here she is with, I can still go to a fast food restaurant and still eat healthy. Not in your case, Chantal, you've got to be ED and being around fast food is just a no, no, uh, health updates. Uh, this was from a month ago where she told everybody she has diabetes, although she revealed that ages ago, this is not anything new to any of us. Uh, her recent thing with two weeks ago, she went to the hospital and she went for an observation. Uh, she talked about going and using Unicity. By the way, Chantal, about that. You were using Unicity, allegedly, to control your appetite. So I guess we've stopped using the Unicity because you're back to eating massive amounts of food. Also, you're taking metformin. And as I understand it, if you take metformin, if you eat the naughty foods, it makes your stomach really upset. So have you stopped taking the metformin? You're on three different medications for metformin. Have you stopped taking it? It would seem so. We're talking about the unicity. Uh, here we go. Her trying to marry two different worlds that don't go together. Mukbang and healthy. <laughs> Those two things do not go together. Healthy mukbangs are what the, not, the food fetish people don't want to see healthy mukbangs. They want to see unhealthy mukbangs. So she's, again, trying to marry the two worlds with the mukbang world, with the healthy food world, trying to combine different audiences, although those two are completely separate. Uh, one month ago, trying to reverse type 2 diabetes, uh, trying to get weight loss surgery. Uh, this was four years ago. Why my weight loss doctor's plan is not for me. So four years ago, the doctors were telling her the same information they've been telling her for the longest and she did not want to listen. Every time she goes to a doctor or a hospital, they give her the same advice. They advise her what to do. You know, cut back on all the naughty foods, eat healthy, get exercise. It's the same words each and every time. And she ignores them each and every time. Uh, four years ago, what I eat in a day for weight loss. So this, this whole journey of like, trying to get healthy there's as many stops as there are starts but there's never any period where things improve she doesn't stay at it long enough there's no consistency it's just i've got this great idea i'm gonna have it in my head but once i get bored with it or once i start craving the naughty foods i'm just going to completely abandon it and once i abandon it and my subscribers come at me with questions and comments about my health. I'm just going to go in defensive mode and say, I can do what I want. I can eat what I want. And that'll shut everybody up. Like, it's really strange. She wants her subscribers to care about her. And when they express care in a way she doesn't like, she punishes them. Uh, what I eat in a day for weight loss. That was four years ago. Let's see, she, six months ago, I gained weight, weight loss journey. Uh, four years ago, weigh in Wednesday and vlog with Pete. Uh, one month ago, diabetic grocery haul. Uh, six months ago, I have BED. Five years ago, 21 day water fast. We've seen a lot of these from Chantal, like her going on a water fast. She claims to go on a water fast, but yet that never really 
pans out. If she doesn't stick with that for long. I hear she is being defensive. Two years ago, stop telling fat people how to eat. Carbs are fine. So again, going into defensive mode. She puts things out in front of an audience, says what she's going to do. People support her. Then when she falls off and people ask her why, or they're like, what are you doing to yourself? You want to get healthy. She, she goes into defensive mode. She puts up her defiant shield and nobody's going to get behind it and tell her otherwise. Uh, more weigh-ins. Uh, one month ago, honest full day of eating at almost 400 pounds. Five years ago, day 16, weight loss journey. So for those that are not familiar with her history, like the history is right here on her own channel. I did not just scour all over the internet looking for this. It's on her channel. If you pull up Foodie Beauty Health and you scroll through the videos, you can see the pattern of stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, stop, start, back, forth, back, forth, back, forth. And in the meantime, her health just gets worse. Foodie's got a multitude of health problems. You know, blood clots in her lungs. She's got non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. Uh, I remember her mentioning that her liver is three times the size of normal. She's got diabetes, lack of mobility, uh, breathing problems, everything, multitude, myriad of problems. And any one of them could do serious damage to her. And yet she's got multiple ones going on at the same time. Uh, what I ate today is a fat girl trying to lose weight in a weigh-in that's six months ago. Uh, let's see. Admitting to BED six months ago, uh, five years ago, weight loss, transformation, new nails and loads of sweat. Yeah, more history about foodie for those who are not aware. So when she was with BB and she ate cheese to the point where she, it landed her in the hospital, it landed her in the ER. Her boyfriend at the time, BB, God bless him. He really tried with foodie. He really did. He cared for her. He absolutely cared for this woman. You know, he did what he could based on what he knew. He tried to get her to go to the gym and eat healthy. Once he found out that she had a problem with food, because I believe that pizza boxes were found in a closet. Once he, once it was discovered that she had a problem with food, he had to go to the gym and eating healthy. And that lasted for a very short while. And then the relationship was over. And then once... Foodie moved into the villa with Pete's and she didn't have to worry about BB being there to, you know, say something. She really lost control. She went wild at the villa because Pete's was not going to say anything to her or, you know, protest about what she was doing. Uh, five years ago, obese girl does water fast. Uh, another one, water fasting day four, day five, uh, weight loss vlog. Five years ago. So this, this is an ongoing thing, y'all. This is an ongoing thing. And it's not a matter of her winning a battle or losing a battle. You can't win or lose if you never even get started with it. If you never even start to fight. You're not really, you're, she says, I'm struggling with my BED. I'm struggling with my weight. I would agree if I saw the fight in you, foodie. But I don't see you fighting. I don't see you fighting for anything. I don't see you struggling against anything. I see you giving in. Absolutely giving in to your urges, to your impulsiveness, to your cravings. You give in rather than pull away. So I want to give like that brief history for those who don't know it. And then we're gonna we're moving on to something else here. So let me just get rid of that and move on and to find some of the clips that I'm going to be using today. I had to go looking because it, like I said, they're not on foodies channel. Uh, so there is a site called foodiebeauty.site, which is essentially like an archive site of some of foodie stuff. Some of the stuff that she doesn't have on her page anymore. So I want to start here with a clip where she talks about 
the blood clots in her lungs. Because, like I said, she's got a history of them. She should be on medication for this, but she talks about going on doing her medication for diabetes, but there's been no mention about taking the medication for uh, like the blood thinners. Where is the mention of the blood thinners? This woman, she flies back and forth from Canada to Kuwait and then from Kuwait to Thailand. She should be on her blood thinners because at her size, given her history with blood clots, it could be highly dangerous, highly dangerous. Uh, so I'm going to feature that clip here with her talking about it. Oh, wait. Oops. I'm so sorry. Excuse me. I am so sorry. That was my mistake. That was my mistake. I, I apologize. I wasn't sharing the screen. My apologies. You guys want to see the video. There it is. Okay. Let, let's back up just a half, half a hair. Let's back it up a little bit. All right. Let, let's get started here. Hey guys, I apologize about the quality of this video, the lighting. I'm going to do a quick update. I'm really and I'm sorry I can't show the entire screen, but as you can see, the video is enormous. It takes up all of my computer screen. I got to get down to where I can stop and start. So if, if her head is cut off, please forgive me. I'm really tired and actually talking a lot exacerbates my breathing. But basically, um, just got back from... So I'm going to start at the beginning, actually. Tell you everything that happened. <clears throat> Sunday, I had plans with Rena Sunday, manicure, everything, like I said. You saw how my breathing was in that video, Sunday's video. I couldn't take a shower or even clean up my cupboards without being really out of breath. And on top of that, when I would try to catch my breath. And this is actually quite relevant right now, what she's saying. Because she's in Kuwait right now. And she's talking about getting a maid or a caretaker to come in and do simple duties because she can't do them. And I don't know if that's due to laziness or perhaps her health is so bad that she cannot literally do anything. But here she is five, six years ago, and you can see she's at a lower weight than she is now. And she had breathing problems all the way back then. I would get really bad chest pain and I would cough. <laughs> I had pain in my leg, but that ended up being unrelated to everything. But so I thought I better go to the ER. Just, I don't know. I wasn't going to go. Something just told me to go. And I think people were like, your breathing's bad. You know, you should go. So I decided to go. Um, so I went, they did a chest x-ray. I updated you guys. They did an EKG first run of blood work, everything came back normal. Um, then I did a walk test because I was still out of breath. He tried a puffer on me, didn't work. The walk test, my oxygen saturation went down low when I would walk too far, but it would go back up. So my vitals and everything were fine. Then he did a blood test based on my symptoms with the trouble breathing. <clears throat> for it's a marker in your blood called D, I think it's D-dimer. I'll put the name here. That came back high. So um, they figure if that happens, then we treat it like you have a blood clot. <clears throat> so in that case, I was really worried because they gave me this. They gave me this paper. They gave me a pill, a blood thinner pill, and sent me home. So, uh, so then they said tomorrow morning, it was like 4.30 in the morning at this point. They're like at 8.30 in the morning, you're going to get a call from the thrombosis unit in the hospital here. They're going to make you an appointment to see this doctor specialist or whatever. They're going to give you like a type of C CT scan and an ultrasound on your leg, CT on your lungs to see if there's any clots. So I get there. So I'm like, okay, so they send me home and a lot of you were surprised about that. It's because the doctor actually, because of all my other tests were normal, 
and the D dimer can be false like 40 to 60% of the time for whatever reason. He didn't think I had a blood clot. So <clears throat> he sent me home, said I would be fine. And I, I said, aren't pulmonary embolisms deadly? It even says on this paper, a pulmonary embolism can be fatal. <laughs> so I was, you know, and I had all the symptoms, shortness of breath, chest pain, dizziness, coughing, almost fainting. I you know it's, it's actually kind of scary to watch. You know, like anybody out there, like, the idea of a blood clot in your lung would be frightening. Absolutely frightening. So she's got a history of blood clots in her lungs dating all the way back five or six years ago. And I've been reacting to foodie for a while, all through this Kuwait arc and no mention of taking blood thinners. Where are the blood thinners to go along with the diabetes medication? Where is the mention of that? So this time period that we're talking about here right now, the doctor let you know like something serious was going on. That should have scared you to do something about yourself, even all the way back then. And you didn't do anything. You really didn't do anything. Had a lightheaded. So they call me, I go to the hospital, it's the thrombosis unit, they do the testing, they made me inhale this radioactive dye, put dye in my veins, then it's like this machine that comes over your chest, takes pictures. They did an ultrasound on my legs, up to my groin. <clears throat> the, um, the doctor, the nurse practitioner, the doctor was gone at that point, called me in and said, um, well you don't have any blood clots in your legs. There's no evidence that there was blood clots in your leg or whatever, but there is a blood clot on your lung. I've told this story so many times to my family members and BBs there. You probably heard it a million times. So <clears throat> at that point, I just was like in shock. I was like not expecting that because even the guy doing the imaging on my lungs said, we're just going to check. The doctor doesn't think it's anything. It turned out to be something. So um, at that point, uh, I was like, oh, and I just started crying because I'm like, that's not good news. I started crying because I was. What a difference five years, six years can make. So five or six years ago, anybody telling her that her health was bad, something was wrong, would actually make her upset. And now in the current day, she's in even worse health and she literally doesn't care. She'll sit down and do a mukbang with a literal hubcap full of food and not care. And she'll go to a grocery store and buy 15 packs of cheese and Nutella and juice. And I don't know where in all of her journey, she just literally stopped caring about her health, but the recent mukbangs you've done Chantal it the vibe that I'm getting from you is that you've literally given up on yourself there's no fight in you you're not fighting for your life you're not fighting for your health you're not fighting for anything you are just settled into the idea of whatever happens happens and that is such a shame that you've got all the tools and you've got all the resources to make yourself better and you don't want to just because you are more focused on being defiant to your own body, to people on YouTube. You're more concerned with how you look in front of strangers on the internet. You're more concerned with saving face in front of them than your own life. I think life has passed you so many warning signs about your health so many of them and it's given you all the tools to fix everything that's wrong and yet you just pushed fate's hand away and said no i don't care and now we've all reached a point or you've reached a point where what more can fate or life or luck do for you this is the point where you got to help yourself i don't like you you're a mean 
nasty, evil, rotten human being. My opinion about that will never change. You hurting yourself is one thing. That's a choice. But then you also chose to hurt innocent lives like BBJ and Sam. For that, that is absolutely unforgivable. And so I will always say that you're a mean, nasty, evil, rotten person. Well, I also, on the same note, think it's an absolute shame and a waste of fortune that fortune came to you with a golden cup and you turned it into a cup of poison just by using it wrongly. But this is, this is your life. Or should I say lack of life these days? But all the way back then, life was saying, hey, you need to get it together. You really need to take care of your health. And you did not. In shock, what she said. You're lucky you came to the ER when you did. Because if you hadn't, it would keep traveling. It would could travel to your brain and be fatal. Somebody saying that to me would scare the living crap out of me. Absolutely scare the crap out of me. I've never been unhealthy as Chantal. But if something were going on in my body and I had a doctor or a nurse tell me dire news like that, I would be doing everything in my power to make sure that I did not get that close to the edge ever again. I Do I got to take medication? I'm taking it. Do I need to eat nothing but healthy food? We're eating it. We're staying away from the unhealthy stuff. This, could, this should have been a moment where she had to wake up and take care of her health. And she didn't. She absolutely didn't. Even now, six years later, eating ridiculous amounts of food and mukbangs, still focused on catering to people on her channel that just have a fetish. And they don't care who satisfies it as long as it's satisfied. Chantal, those people on your channel that are interested in food, they are not your friends. You don't know them. You're not around them. They are subscribers, but they are not your friends. And some of those subscribers, they are there for their own purpose. And the purpose is to watch you eat. And they see how sick you are. They don't care. They just want what they want. And you see how bad you're getting and you don't care. You're just letting it happen. So I flipped out, like, you know, then they brought BB in. I have to be on injections to stop it from traveling. So these injections, so these injections that I'm on, you know, hep, I take twice a day. One in the morning, one at night. BB knows how to do it. He's going to help me. It needs to go in your stomach, right near your belly button. I'm also on warfarin, which is, these are blood thinners, by the way. So I have to be careful with vitamin K foods, leafy greens, broccoli, stuff like that. Um, so I didn't know that about warfarin. you got to be careful with the leafy greens and stuff. Chantal doesn't like leafy greens anyway. So maybe her having blood clots in her lungs and the blood thinners, you got to be careful with leafy greens. That gives her the perfect out to eat on a healthy. She might be using that as a reason to not eat healthy. Well, I've had blood clots and I'm taking this medication. Although we haven't heard much in the way of her taking her blood thinners lately. Chantal's always been bad about taking her medications as prescribed. She'll take them sometimes but not all the time. When she was on antidepressants, she wouldn't take them regularly. And when, as I understand it, if you take antidepressants, you have to take them on the regular for them to work. And then when you stop, if you start again, you, you, it's, it's a whole thing. Like your body has to go through an adjustment period, just like with the uh, metformin. From what I've heard from my subscribers, the metformin, it does make your stomach upset for a while. But if you keep taking it, if you eat well, the, 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 the bad symptoms go away, but you get adjusted to it. But she never sticks with anything that's meant to help her. Um, 
I can still eat them, but I have to be consistent. Like I can't just go and eat a whole bunch because it can throw off the, the blood thinners. So she gave me the first injection. I got to do another one tonight. Um, BB was really great with me the whole time. I couldn't even walk. Like I can't walk without almost dying. Like it's just literally. So I had to be in a wheelchair and I just. And, and this was five years ago. Like I said, this video was done five years ago. Five years ago, she was like 150 pounds lighter. She was having trouble breathing. She was having trouble walking. We all remember the foodie scooty, the, 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 the walker that she used for a while. She made a big deal about getting it, saying she was going to walk with it. She never really did. It just sat in a corner. But just imagine, in this time period, five, six years ago, she is almost 400 pounds. Chantal is five feet tall or four foot nine. So she's really, really short. Her target weight, like her normal weight should be 120, 125 pounds. And she's over 500. She's hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds overweight. And her small frame cannot handle that much weight. That's why her back hurts. That's why her legs hurt. That and the fact that she doesn't move. She's not keeping her circulation up. She's not getting her body used to movement. She's leaning into not moving, thinking that if she doesn't move, she won't be in as much pain. But just the reverse is true, Chantal. The less you move, the more it hurts when you do. Hence why the reason why you can't do so much. I'm just still trying to process everything. So basically the injection, because the warfarin takes time to get in your system, the injection is supposed to stop the blood clot from traveling. So it'll stick where it is. Eventually it will dissolve. That's the hope. If I feel any worse than the symptoms I have now. You know, she hasn't really been to the doctor, I don't think, to check for blood clots. I don't know if she has blood clots, but I know if I had a history of blood clots in my lungs, I would be getting checked regularly to make sure they don't come back. I would take whatever medication I can to make sure that doesn't happen again. But when is the last time that Chantal's been to the doctor to check for blood clots? That's kind of worrying because she's talking about going back to Thailand, which means another plane trip, which is another round of her rolling the dice. Chantal, if I were you, I'd be going to the doctor and checking those lungs out. You're having trouble breathing. You're having trouble walking. You sit still all the time. Your health is bad. You're eating all that bad food. Why wouldn't you stay on top of this? I need to go to the ER right away. There's things to watch for. I'm at an increased risk of bleeding. So, yeah, um, this is a very, very hard lesson. Although I did say. Well, it was obviously one that you did not learn. Because you made this video five years ago. You haven't learned anything. You don't want to learn anything. You've said it many times. Change is uncomfortable. You don't like being uncomfortable. You avoid being uncomfortable. You'd rather be comfortable. Although I am confused, so please help me. You don't like change, but I would think being a five feet tall, 500 plus pound woman would be extremely uncomfortable, extremely painful. You have to be living with an immense amount of pain right now. Is that not uncomfortable? So if you don't like to be uncomfortable, if you don't like to be in pain, why are you living with all of that? Why aren't you changing it? I guess maybe for you, certain kinds of pain and being uncomfortable is acceptable. It's your normal. To the point where you, you can tolerate it to a certain degree. And therefore, since you can tolerate it, you're not going to do anything about it. But there's nothing normal about your situation. Nothing normal at all. Because they were kind of shocked. Um, not shocked, but they kept saying, well, you know, did you travel recently? Did you injure yourself? Did you have an operation? They didn't seem to correlate weight, which I expected them to be like, you're overweight. This is the cause. 
inactivity can cause blood clots. So she did say, try to walk. That part. Inactivity can cause blood clots, Chantal. Did you hear yourself? They told you inactivity can cause blood clots. You have a history of blood clots already. You've dealt with this before. They gave you medication for it. But over the course of time, you become less and less active, which means the chances of blood clots go up. And this doesn't scare you? On top of the other problems going on at the same time, the enlarged heart, the fatty liver, the non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, the diabetes, all of those things going on at the same time. All of your major organs are messed up. You're not getting more active, you're getting less active. Now you're talking about getting a maid, which means you're not gonna move at all. You're gonna sit on the couch with your phone, somebody else is gonna come in, do the cleaning, and I hope take care of the pets, but you're not gonna do anything. So you're going to sit perfectly still and your health is going to become worse. And by the way, about that, if the plan is to have Salah take care of you, if that is your dream life, if that is the master goal here, understand, madam, that caring for a bariatric patient or a bed bound patient is a big, big job. Being a caretaker is nothing to laugh at. It's a lot of work. It's a lot of labor, a lot of care. Salah does not have medical training at all. He's not a doctor, not a nurse, not an RN. He's just an ordinary person with no medical knowledge whatsoever. He's already over you. He's already sick of the situation. He is not going to be by your side if you go to the hospital. He's not going to hold your hand. And if you are bed bound at home, he is not going to be there to care for you, to bathe you every day, two or three times a day, to check for skin infections, to make sure you don't get bed sores, which could be, they can turn full of infection and full of pus. He's not going to change your bedpan. He's not going to help you to the bathroom. He's not going to help you dress. You're going to be left completely alone with no one to care for you unless you pay a medical professional to do so, which can be quite expensive. So if the plan is just to give up and force people to take care of you, it's a really, really bad plan. Do you understand? It's stupid and you should stop and find something, some kind of medic, find some motivation to get your butt back to Canada and get an inpatient. In my personal opinion, I know that inpatient is not a forced thing, but in my opinion, given the severity of Chantal's case, what's going on with her, the fact that she has no self-control, the fact that she does not know how to control herself, and she is surrounded by people that enable her. Given the environment that she's living in, she should be put in forced inpatient. Locked down inpatient and supervised. That's the only thing that's gonna save her if she wants to be saved. Cause she's not gonna do it on her own. She's not gonna reach out for help. She's not going to admit that she's wrong. She's not going to just have that wake up moment and surrender and say, I don't know what I'm doing. I need help. Never going to happen. She's way too defiant. All she cares about is holding on to Salah and saving face in front of people on the internet. You know, Chantal, you got to get your priorities right. Your priorities are not right right now. They're not. A little bit when you're feeling better try to walk a little bit especially it's nicer out but it's not always caused by weight um this didn't 
start in my leg and travel to my lungs like a lot of blood clots blood clots do in people who are inactive it actually just was in my lung so that's that they don't know where it came from it could be genetics my grandmother has problems with that blood clotting she has pulmonary hypertension so so you've got a family history of medical problems which is common some things are just genetic if, if you have family members that might suffer from some things you might be predisposed to suffer from those things so this is something that you know about and you have known about that your some of your family members have dealt with medical issues again that should make you be more on the watch for your own health knowing that you have a family history of family members who've dealt with certain things and yet you're not so your grandmother she's had a history with some stuff like blood clots and now you've got them that kind of points in the direction that maybe it's something genetic all the more reason to take care of your health this is what it is. so now i have to get blood work for inr every week i'm going on wednesday actually i need to follow up with them every week this thrombosis clinic so for the time being, my life is changing. Um, yes, it's a very um, big scare, definitely. Not big enough. And I'm going to talk a little bit morbid here for a second. It's just real talk. There's nothing malicious about it. In my opinion, Chantal is so defiant and she's so obsessed with saving face in front of people that even if she dealt with something really severe, like say losing a leg or a finger or a foot to diabetes, that still wouldn't wake her up. She would just simply turn that into content. She would use that as a way to garner sympathy and money from people. Likewise, and again, I'm not wishing this upon Chantal, with her eating and her not caring about her health, she's actually wishing it more upon herself than anybody wishing it upon her. But if by chance, she even just say had a mini stroke or a mini heart attack and she survived through it. You know, I've known someone that had a mini stroke. They survived through it. But the after effects of it was they lost feeling in one half of their body and it messed up their brain with their memory. This friend of mine, he actually forgot how to eat. They had to put a tube in his stomach because he forgot how to eat. That's how bad it was. I don't even think something like that would change Foodie's mind or change her outlook. She's obsessed with being defiant and coming out on top and being the victor. And I know more than the rest of you people you know, Chantal, you look at being defiant and being right as a strength. Let me tell you real strength. Lean in close. Real strength is when you have self-awareness about yourself. Real self-awareness. Real strength is standing still and dealing with the consequences of your words and your actions. Real strength is being human and saying, I'm wrong when you are wrong. Real strength comes when you have a problem or an issue or an addiction or an obsession and you realize it's way over your head and you reach out for help and you get the help and you get better. That's real strength. Because it, it takes a lot of strength to admit that you're in over your head, that you're wrong. Some people can't do it. They just can't swallow their pride or their defiance and do it. When you get that strength, you can change. And people will help you change. But the thing is, I honestly don't think you want to change. I've been watching you for a long time. And I've kept note of your eyes because they say the eyes are the windows to the soul. And I've looked into your eyes and I have not seen that look 
of you really want to change. I don't see that light in there that you're really, really fighting through it and you want to change. What I see when I look into your eyes is you've given up, you feel defeated, you're resigned to your fate, whatever that is, and you're just going with the flow, even though the flow is toxic. So I'll leave you guys here with this update. I appreciate all your concern. And I'll talk more to you guys tomorrow. Okay, I'm really tired. We're both so tired. But I'm running on no sleep. So I'll see you tomorrow. Bye, guys. Okay, so that was the first video. So let's move on to the second one. All right. And that, again, is courtesy of Foodie Beauty Archive. That's foodiebeauty.site. Giving full credit to them or whoever it is that has made this page. Let's get out of here. Okay. And we're going to go on to the next one. And this one, uh, let's see, what is the title of this one? It's the Eat Dinner With Me and a Hospital Story. So talking about her time at the hospital. Okay. So we're going to start from here. And just again, for context, everybody knows where everything's at. This was still back at the time when she was with BB. And she's still in that phase of, I had to go to the hospital. Now I'm trying to eat healthy. She's going on like a, like a starting a health journey, which does not last long, but just giving context for that. Let's get out of this one. Let's move over here and let's put it up on the screen. And again, I am so sorry if you don't see her face, but it, it's in order for me to react to this, I have, oh, you know what? I can, I can pull this back. I can pull it, but I just want to give like eat dinner with me and hospital story. Okay. So we just got to keep it here. Let's go from here. One moment. Let's go. Hey, <laughs> hi. Sorry about my cruddy nails. Um, and this and take note of the way she looks here. Like she does have a little bit of a light in her eyes. She looks a bit healthier compared to how she looks now. Go go to her recent videos. You'll see the difference just in her overall energy and, and the way she looks and the way she talks. She was a whole different person back then. This Chantal right here is the one that a lot of people fell in love with. A lot of people got into her because she seemed a bit relatable and likable then. I think the worst thing that ever happened to Chantal was her channel getting monetized. Like once she got monetized, once she started making that YouTube money, she started to change herself and she warped herself into a completely different person. She became a caricature of herself. But this was a time period where the person, Foodie Beauty, still existed. And the persona, I'm sorry, the person, Chantal Marie, still existed. And the persona that she created on YouTube, Foodie Beauty, hadn't completely taken over. The bigger her channel got, the more money she made, the more the persona took over, and the more the actual person took a back seat. And as the person took a back seat, her personal life and everything in it just started going to ruins. But at this time period, people started to get into her channel. They got into her content. They got into her personality. There's a lot of people, some of them that react to Chantal, they started out liking her. Or there might be some people in the reaction channel audience, they started out liking her. And then over the course of time, as they figured her out and she started to get toxic, they just fell away from her and went to the reaction channel audience. But this was this was foodie five, six years ago, but she's going to tell us a little hospital story. So let's go set up. I have a tripod on in on the way in the mail and I have one. Something so that I can drive around because I want to do like drives with you guys and just talk and I find them so calming, you know, and take you places like I want to do that. <laughs> so, yeah. So the irony of her saying that is during this time period with BB and I remember this clearly. Booty, very clearly while you were with bb 
you would sneak out at two, three o'clock in the morning doing a live stream and go to fast food restaurants to get your fix. One right after the other. So it wasn't so much about taking people places and seeing different things in Canada. It was all about you just wanting that rush of doing something you knew you weren't supposed to do, eating food that you knew you weren't supposed to eat. You wanted the kick, the combined kick of eating food that really was not good for you and having an audience of people to give you attention and having them watch. You said before that you don't like eating the food alone because there's no thrill in that. But I do remember all those drives to the fast food restaurants at like ungodly hours of the morning. So you're talking about getting a camera and taking people places and yet that's where you chose to take them on your little early morning fast food runs. Oh, I am, today uh, is day two from being released from the hospital and I'm just still easing my stomach back into eating things. Um, the hospital food, I'm gonna get to that. But yeah, so I'm just, I need to, we need to do groceries. Um, BB's gonna do some for me. I need to get some fresh vegetables. I need to get some good food for my gut. And yeah, and right now I just have a golden delicious apple, two of my extreme beans, some mashed potatoes with like chicken breast, just a little bit and a little bit of this like sauce. It's like vegetable based, but <laughs> uh, sauce I have. So uh, low sodium. So anyways, and I have here a tea. This tea is called Detox. It's from Traditional Medicinals. I think it has, it's herbal. So it has like, um, I don't know. So I want to say that there's nothing wrong with the food on her plate. Absolutely nothing wrong with the food on her plate. But she's been dealing with BED since she was young, even before YouTube. So she's going to eat that food. But the bee monster is not going to be happy with that. It's not going to be satiated. It's not going to be satisfied. She's going to eat that meal. And like I said, she, she got her camera driving around to fast food restaurants three in the morning. So it seemed during this time period, she would eat this food in front of BB and put on appearances that she cared about her health. And then when he went to sleep, she would sneak off and, and have her little snack attack moments. So she really wasn't taking care of her health, even after a big time hospital scare. And they told her that she had blood clots in her lungs and gave her medication for it. Licorice root and dandelion root and other things like that. So I took a shower, I'm feeling good. I, now that I don't smell like a bag of farts anymore and a bologna and cheese sandwich. <laughs> oh my God, you guys. I smelled so bad when I was in the hospital. I know that's gross, but TMI. Yeah, what a difference five years can make. So five years ago, while she was with BB, she cared about her appearance. She would come on camera, makeup done, hair done, nails done, taking a shower. And here we are. She doesn't care about her hygiene. She doesn't brush her teeth. Like she, she's literally, she literally does not care about herself inside or out. Neglecting her internal health, neglecting her external health, neglecting her hygiene. The feeling from foodie these days is I just don't care. I don't care how I look. I don't care how I smell. I don't care about my health. Just completely giving up. And there's nothing that anybody can do. She's got to do the thing. She's got to do it. You know me. <laughs> or not. TMI indeed. Maybe I'll title that this because I'm going to try not to be gross and talk about bodily fluids and things like that. But I'm going to tell you about my hospital. Again, <laughs> this was back when there was a Chantal Marie versus a foodie beauty. Look how different they are. Chantal Marie cares about how she looks cares about how she smells, doesn't want to talk about anything gross. Foodie beauty is the complete opposite. She'll tell you all about bodily functions all day long. She'll talk about her farts. She'll talk about, 
you know, sharding her pants. She likes to admit, she says she loves things that are gross. So it's, you got two different entities here. Chantal Marie cares about herself. Foodie doesn't. And it would seem that the persona of Foodie Beauty is taken over. Like I said, the persona has taken over the person. Hence the reason why the person, Chantal Marie, her life is in ruins. And I don't know if there's anything ever going back. Hospital stay because I've been wanting to talk about it. Golden mm. delicious. I've just been eating what I have in the house, like I said. I need to uh, go shopping. So I'm on like, yeah, so basically I noticed something in common. I used to have these attacks. The last time I had an attack like this was, um, baby bite. Um, like six years ago, it was when I was with my ex, maybe even longer than that. Before I had, I have a history of having ovarian cysts. And it's hormone related, hormonal issue. And my gynecologist told me many times, eat clean, limit the carbs you know and and before we go any further that's another thing that i almost forgot so chantal had a hysterectomy while she was with bb so she should be on hormone replacement no mention of that either so she should be on multiple amounts of medications and and treatments and she's not keeping up with any one of them and if you have a hysterectomy you should be taking the hrts she's not but here here's another doctor another one telling her take care of your health all the doctors say the same thing take care of your health take care of your body exercise eat well every single one of them but did it ever occur to you that if you're talking to different people who don't know each other they've never had a conversation between each other if they're saying the same things that it might be for a reason there must be something to that. No, limit the dairy, limit inf anti inflammatory foods, which are my right. Like eliminate dairy. What is cheese? Y'all, what is cheese? It's fat. It's dairy. Real cheese is dairy. What did she just got through buying? 15 packs of freaking cheese. Every kind of cheese available in the store. Why? Just why? My favorite food, of course. I'm dumb. Don't listen. Just do what I want to do, you know. Right. So I'm paying the piper. But basically, I had a couple bad attacks. And when I think back and I notice what triggers the attacks, let's say, okay, the first attack I had was right after I ate I put in with extra cheese. Oh man, that was a bad attack. And I had those ovarian cysts. None. And she has neither stopped eating cheese nor puts in. She hasn't stopped eating either one of those. Like part of her haul was French fries, frozen French fries and cheese. <clears throat> Why? <laughs> Still eating stuff that you know you shouldn't have. Chantal, you're a carb addict. And I know what that's like because that was my problem. I, I was a carb addict too. It's a pain in the butt. It sucks when you like carbs that much. Really, carbs turn into sugar. But just you crave carbs. And it's hard. Carbs are hard to avoid. There's sugar in everything. There, there's sugar in salad dressing. You got to read labels. But you are a serious carb addict. Most of the meals that you eat are very carb heavy. 
There's very little protein and vegetable. It's only carbs. There's no earthly reason why you need that much in the way of carbs. Carbs are what the body uses to give us energy. So there you are putting foods that are supposed to give you energy into your gas tank, but you don't go anywhere. And then all those carbs turn into fat, which makes all of your problems far worse. You've got a lot of visceral fat packed around your organs, which is dangerous for your organs. But instead of decreasing that, you're increasing that because you just can't get away from the freaking carbs. One after that was after eating extra cheese pizza. And now, do you want a bite of this, guys? No, thank you. And now the most recent, I had finished eating, you're going to really give me shit, a cheesy cheddar burger and 10 chicken nuggets from Wendy's. What's scary when you watch this is she's talking about the foods she ate that she had problems with. And the food that she was eating back then, the amount was much smaller than the amount she eats now. Like a couple of burgers turned into a whole platter full of food. So she's rapidly declining by her own hand. And I do it mindlessly. I don't even think. I just shove my high hole. Full yeah, like that's that's the BED talking. That's what that is. Been there, done that. That's the BED in control of you. Like you, you eat. You're not eating because you're hungry. You're eating for other reasons besides hunger. You eat when you're bored. You eat out of just toxic routine. Like if you sit down at the TV and... You get into a routine of having a snack in front of the TV, or if you get into a routine of eating something before bed, you know, you set up those toxic routines. And we as people, as humans, we develop patterns and, 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 and habits. So if you have toxic habits and to toxic routines, you develop patterns out of that, you got to break them. You've got to break them. Chantal eats for whenever, however, why ever. You can get into that mindless eating when you're not even thinking about what you're doing. You just do it. It's not out of hunger. It's out of just like, I'm, I'm just used to doing it and that's just what I do. And as someone that I've dealt with BED, like something y'all should know. For those that are wondering, how can Chantal eat so doggone much? Like how? Like honestly, I don't know how she puts it all away, where it all goes. But one thing I can tell you is from my experience that the way things normally are for a normal person, when you eat, the moment you start eating, it takes about 10 to 15 minutes for your brain and your stomach to have that chemical signal between each other to signal that you're full or you're getting full. Like it takes a few minutes for your those two things to catch up. When you have BED, that can get disrupted for a time. You won't get that signal. And because you're not getting that signal, like you're, and you've got, you've got your mind telling you, keep eating, keep eating, keep eating. You know, you, you'll just keep doing it. I'm not a doctor. I'm not here to diagnose Chantal, but that might be what's going on with her and it's been going on with her for years. Like because of all this massive eating and her problem with food, like, that that mechanism is temporarily switched off and to switch it back on she would have to do the healthy eating and do portion control and get into treatment and therapy until she does that that switch is going to be forever backwards full of crap anyway i'm driving home It was about 5 p.m. Friday. I start feeling a ping, like, in my ovary area. It's hard to tell because your organs, like your bowels and things, are all so close together down there. 
but I started feeling a cramp and it was brought back horrible memories of the time that I had my attacks. Oh my gosh. Uh, something else for those who also are not aware of her history. This happened a while ago. So she was having bowel issues. She went through a bout of C. diff, which is, it's, it's really, really nasty. That does mess up your bowels and it's foul smelling from what I understand. Uh, the doctor want her to come in and do a fecal transplant. And for those who are probably wondering, like, why, why, what is that all about? A fecal transplant, they sometimes do that to people that they don't have the healthy bacteria in the gut. So they put something in there, I guess, to introduce healthy bacteria, because that's important for gut health. But things were just that bad with Chantal that that actually got suggested to her. That's how much she's messed herself up. When I had the ovaries, the cyst remove, it stopped. But now I have two 16 centimeter. So I think they're about six inches, one on each ovary, large cyst. Um, the whole way home, I just kept, I kept praying. You know, when you're sick, that's when you think, I know it's really bad. That's, that's when you think of a higher being, like, am I, I don't want to die. Like your life is, you don't realize how life your precious is until it's in the balance. So you're like, the pain was unbearable. I'm like, just make it home. I got home. I got violently ill and I went into a fetal position and at around three in the morning, BB was like, we need to go to a hospital. So I called an ambulance, went to the hospital. The hospital people at the Ottawa general hospital are amazing. They're they're The nursing staff, it's a teaching hospital. So university of Ottawa students, well, resident doctors there, it's just a the minute i got in the er there wasn't much of a wait thank god um you know they took me off the stretcher i was in a wheelchair <clears throat> this beautiful young nurse comes up to me and was like do you want something for pain she gave me like a cocktail she gave me like i was in so much pain guys i was delirious she gave me an injection of something. I think it was dilated, like a super amount of dilated, and instantly. That's pretty severe. Dilated is basically. I hate this. I got to use. Be careful with my words. Isn't dilated like basically hospital hero in? I have to say it like that. That's pretty strong. I, I'm having trouble with this story right now because that is pretty severe. Why would they give Chantal something like that? No, not knowing what's really wrong with her. So like, I'm, I'm, I'm questioning that aspect of the story already. I was just like, maybe like a minute later, I was so high. I was just like, Oh yeah. Now I know why this stuff is addictive, you know, but uh, it makes you dizzy. So Just trying to eat slow. Mm. So I'm like, that's better. She gave me something for nausea and an anti-inflammatory. Then I had to wait in this exam room. You know, she figured the doctor would want to exam me. So a resident doctor came in. And I mean, I couldn't do anything by myself. I couldn't. Like, I, again, I get I'm having trouble with this story. That some of the details are like, what? A nurse giving somebody who's not diagnosed yet medications, not being aware of what might be wrong and what they're giving them might actually make it worse, especially the Dilaudid. Like, that's powerful stuff. That's really powerful stuff. Like, but, but go ahead, Chantal, tell your story. Wipe myself. I couldn't because the pain was so bad. Like, I could hardly move. And moving made it worse. Um, guys, BB, mm, I love, like, he's the best. Like, he took such good care of me. He showered me. 
He dressed, he did everything. He was so worried about me. He had to work four to midnight. And after his shift, he would come to the hospital with clean underwear and change my, my everything change. Just, he was amazing. Do you have regrets, Chantal? Do you have any regrets whatsoever? Even to this day, do you have the regret that you lost BB by just being dumb and stupid? BB was a really wonderful guy. Great guy, hardworking, polite, nice, just on the ball, caring. Do you have any regrets about losing somebody like that, that he loved you so much? That even though he was working, he made sure to take care of you. You lost him by being a great, big, selfish, narcissistic fool. A cheating fool. BB was the last really good man you've had in your life. The last independent man. Because every guy after BB, you made codependent on you and your money. For all the talk that you do about, I want an alpha male. I want a dominant man. You really don't want one too dominant. You don't want a man who will stand on his own and have the choice to walk away from you. You don't want to give a man a choice. Because keeping a man tied to you in some way is the only way that a man will stay with you. You basically hold men prisoner by way of your money. You think that's the way to keep them with you, although your attempts to control men with your money have not succeeded yet. You try to control Natter with your money. That did not work. You're trying to control Salah with the money. That's not working either. When you go through a life lesson and you do not learn, you are doomed to repeat it until you finally learn. But BB was a really great guy and you lost him. By being stupid and be, by being a runaround. Because you were seeking validation in other men by way of cheating. Although you had a good man at home. That should have been all of the love and validation you would ever need. You lost him. And you've been on a downward spiral ever since. I know that you're addicted to and still thinking about Natter. But that is the wrong man to be reminiscing over to be missing because you had a much better one in BB. But maybe the reason why you and BB didn't work out is because he deserved better than you, much better. And so life came about and said, we're going to put this man with someone that he deserves and will appreciate him. And so you were taken out of his life, but that was the last good one, Chantal. You had a good apple in your hand and you threw it away in favor of a rotten, apple rotten and you've had a series of rotten apples ever since and i realize that that feeling of being disabled and dependent is i i just i know it's the reality of so many people and i really hated that feeling yeah let's talk about that let's really talk about that Let's talk about that, Chantal. You, five years ago, six years ago, you didn't like the thought or the feeling of being disabled. Here we are six years later and you have moved closer and closer and closer to being completely immobile and wanting to have people take care of you. Let me tell you something. There are people in this world that are disabled wonderful people and even whatever disability they might be dealing with they're still strong and they are they are their fighters there are many people who are disabled that they don't let their disability stop them from living life from being happy from having friends from getting things accomplished wonderful people you on the other hand six years ago you're talking about i don't want to be disabled but now here we are six years later, you're in Kuwait. You don't want to move or you can't move. And you're talking about getting a maid because you don't want to move. 
you're claiming all kinds of difficulties with breathing and moving and yet you won't fix that you won't fix yourself you don't want to fix yourself you want other people to take care of you and so you just lay still and have people move around you and assist you shame absolute shame anyway so i'm in the er eventually you know they're like we should admit you for pain control and until we can determine they sent me for a ct scan my pancreas and all the org other organs were okay the bowels they gave me a lot of blood work and my liver enzymes were elevated um my they did a ca125 test which is like to test for like cancer proteins or whatever And no, there are some in my blood. So I'm worried about that. Wait, what? So I have to see an oncologist. But Stop. This was something I did not know. Wow. Like, I've been watching her a long time. I did not know that she had these tests and they detected something perhaps cancerous in her blood. Chantal, why? Why? Six years later, like, there's all these things going on that... Life is just saying, beware, madam, beware. Your health is not good, beware. And you just didn't listen. Oh my God. But there's other things that can contribute to that. Um, apparently just, I, I can't remember. She said she was, there was uh, some, in, there were markers in my blood for that, but not enough for her to be concerned that it was cancer. But I need to see an oncologist just in case. And these cysts are gonna have to come out. They're not gonna shrink at the size that they are. The last cysts I had removed had precancerous cells, so, or abnormal cells or whatever you call them. So I need to get them out and I need to absolutely take care of my health. So, so yeah, so for those commenting, you know, maybe it's the shit food you're eating. It's absolutely, it's not for everybody. Diet is not always just the culprit. There are people who are healthy who get cysts, but for me, I know that because I'm unhealthy and the way I am is where I'm getting the complications from. So, and yet you continue to be unhealthy and yet you continue to eat unhealthy to the point where you got on YouTube, knowing you had an issue with food, you've known even before YouTube, way before you, you knew back in your teens, you had a problem with food, your, your family, sent you to a treatment center for people who had EDs. So way before YouTube, you were aware of the problem. You cannot claim ignorance like I didn't know. It just kind of snuck up on me. You knew and you chose by choice to get on YouTube and give your problem a job and make money with it. You looked for an audience that would back you up and enable you. And I'm not saying that 100% of the blame is on them. Because ultimately it boils down to it's your choice. Nobody can make you do anything. You came on YouTube knowing you had a problem. Rather than fix the problem, you got your channel. You gave your problem a job. And you created an environment where you talked about food, you showed yourself eating food, and you looked for people that would turn into yes men and not complain against it. That would reinforce it. You are creating a toxic, reinforced environment to continue your problem and feel like it was okay. So again, I'm not blaming your subscribers. There's a lot of people in your audience that they want to see you get healthy, but you're not really focused on them. You don't care if they're concerned. You care more about the people who back up your issues and send you super chats. You're looking for those people that will fund and back up the addiction that you have. Always on the lookout for them. 
you kept yourself on that hamster wheel on purpose because you were making money with it all of these were choices that you decided to make and so the end result is that you found yourself in a place where you're in a corner you can't get out of and your health is so bad that you can barely move barely breathe like you can't go anywhere you hide yourself away you are ashamed about yourself yes you are you lie about your weight you lie about everything that's wrong with you you live in a world of lies rather than truth and yet it's that world of lies that's hurting you it's a truth that will set you free but honestly i don't think you want to be free you want to stay in that little bubble that you created for yourself you want to save face that's not the thing you should be focusing on but again what can anybody do hmm. anyway i'm drinking lots of water so basically um i got admitted to the hospital it's like two and it was like no three in the morning and while i'm waiting to get to a room if they can find me a bed i'm in this like holding room on a bed the pain is still oh it was bad it was throbbing it was radiating through my whole stomach um i was nauseous trying to sleep i'm drugged up they wheel this girl in who apparently is getting a surgery tomorrow or the next day and her whole friggin' family of 10 members and her boyfriend come in. And they're loud. They're talking loud, like really loud. And I'm just like, oh, my God. And here, here's a glimpse of the selfish, self-centered, narcissistic Chantal that we've all come to know and love. So she's the big idiot who put herself in the hospital by eating incorrectly, eating things that she knows she shouldn't have, hence the reason why she's there. It's a hospital. It's not a private resident. It's a hospital. A hospital is a place for people who are sick go to to get treatment. It is not some hotel or motel where everybody has a separate room and it's all about people's comfort. It's about people who are ill looking to get better. And a lot of those people that end up at the hospital, they don't self-induce their pain. So she's in a room and she's not feeling good. And there's somebody next to her with a family, large family. And they're coming in there to comfort the person who's in the bed. And she's complaining about the volume of which they speak. Just resentful of, you're disturbing my sleep. Well, Chantal, if you had taken care of yourself, you wouldn't have been in that hospital that night in pain. You were there for a reason. And the reason was because you were the big idiot eating stuff you shouldn't have had, right? Her boyfriend came in before her family members and I hear him go, can I get a little something, something before you, your surgery? Dude, what's wrong with you? This Are you jealous, Chantal? I think you were jealous. First of all, you don't like other women. You have an intense hatred for anything of the female species, whether it's human or not human. You don't like human women, but that even extends to animals. You don't like female cats, female dogs, anything female you're intensely jealous of and you have a hatred for. So here's this other woman. Of course, you're not going to like her because it's a woman. And here's her boyfriend, maybe wanting to get a little bit frisky, and you were mad. You're just being bitter and jealous over on your bed. You should have minded your business. This girl's getting her pancreas out tomorrow, or her uh, appendix. One of those, I don't know. And you're asking for a BJ. What the hell? Are you mad because he didn't ask you? What's wrong with you? Anyway, so then 
I don't think they realized we were there because the, the curtain was drawn. So then they find me a room and I'm on the seventh floor. And it's a shared room. I had to share a room with this uh, elderly woman. I feel so bad. I guess she was like, I think she was dying. I heard her talking to her family on the phone and the nurse coming in. She had a, she had a very large cyst as well. Um, it was cancer. It was a malignant tumor on her ovaries. You know, just a little thought in my head. So Chantal's in the room and like there's another patient. How is it that she knows all this information about th these other people? Because I would think that if you're a doctor or a nurse, you're, you're not going to share information like that with another patient. You know, patient confidentiality. How is she knowing about all this stuff? She was in bad shape. I was so delirious, though. Like, I think I was hallucinating from the drugs, the cocktail of drugs they were giving me for pain. And, and I don't ever take anything for pain. I seriously don't ever even take Advil. Again, what a difference five years can make. So Chantal Marie, five, six years ago, like she doesn't want to take anything for pain. Foodie beauty of like 20, 20, 22, 23, and 24 will down like 2,000 milligrams worth of gummies. Three to $4,000 worth of cocoa. What a difference time can make, eh? If I don't have to. So I'm like, ooh, you know. And throughout the night, like I had my curtain drawn around me, but the curtain was like beige. I could swear I could hear her walking around like the room. I could see her IV pole, a shadow of an old woman, like with her IV pole and the creaking of the sound, like, ee, you know, <laughs> I think I was just hallucinating because I don't think she was out and about walking around. And then there's this one guy that kept having to call a code white, which is like a psychiatric incident. This one guy kept yelling. It, you would just be, you know, getting the pain meds would be kicking in. You'd be dozing off. And all of a sudden, Alan, 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 Alan. This guy was calling for this guy, Alan. Every night. Always in the middle of the net. No, no, his problem was. It was kind of scared me. Even the lady beside me, I heard her talking to her daughter. She's like, somebody keeps calling for Alan. There's no Alan that I know of. Maybe his son. I don't know. It sounded like a young guy, though. So the nurses would try to calm him down or whatever. And then... Oh, BB just texted me. Hey, Sup, how you feeling? Aw. <laughs> mm, he makes me feel good. <laughs> oh, for the mukbang. We are going to do it this weekend. He's off this weekend. I should have probably specified that, that we're not going to do it right on the 15K marker. But soon after. Yeah, and that's kind of messed up. Like, she's got these health problems. She knows she should be eating healthy and still doing mukbangs. Just why? So we're going to do that. Um, so, yeah. So, and at this point, I hadn't eaten anything in the hospital. I was, I hadn't eaten anything since that cheesy cheddar burger, which didn't stay down long. So disgusting. That's not food. Like... I don't know. So then the next day, they I, they had forgot about me on the food list, but I didn't care. I was sleeping the most. Like I was admitted Friday uh, or early Saturday, I guess, till Tuesday. I left yesterday at around 1130. So I think I only started getting food on the... Monday at breakfast and 
I'll tell you guys what I had. I had a... Uh, I should ask for vegetarian because the vegetarian options are not bad. They give you like rice and lentils and things. But with my gut and the state it was in, like contracting C. difficile, which put... Yep, there we go. This, this is when this... I guess she had C. diff before. So this is like a previous case of C. diff. She had it before. And then later on in the foodie verse, she had C. diff again. I don't, I don't can't remember if it was right before Natter or during Natter. But so that makes two times that we know that she's had C. diff. And from what I understand, C. diff, it's, it's nasty. It is a super bug and it is contagious. So she kept, she basically, she contracting C. diff twice. Put me in my own room, by the way. I had my own room because I was on contact precautions for infection. Like it's very contagious. Mm -hmm. So they don't want you to share a bathroom with anybody, you know? So um, they put me on, on in my own room and I had a window view. And I could see into the windows across into the next building, like other people in their hospital beds. And I saw this one person in a hospital bed and there was like, I don't know, again, I was high on the hydromorphine, but it was like, it looked like eight people just hovering up around the person, just looking at them. And I was like, is that spooky? Or is the person dying? I don't know what's going on. You know, Chantal, I'm, again, I'm not a doctor. I was not in the room with you, but you're talking about being intensely sick. At the time, same time, you're talking about looking out the window and basically being a peak, peak Tom, <laughs> you know? Like you were feeling really sick, but you had enough uh, health that you're sitting there like observing other people. But they took really good care of me. The nurse was so nice. She would come in every so often. Do you need anything? Bring you a cup of crushed ice with water. So my breakfast. Yeah. So they would bring like fiber one cereal, 2% milk. Um, okay. I'm going to go for it a little bit. I don't, I'm, I don't care about her food. Let's see if we can get past it brown liquid with like floating celery, a couple carrots, a stale bun. Um, then supper was like Salisbury. She's still talking about food. I don't care, Chantal. I hear you talk about food enough. Let's go. And uh, yeah, and then they gave you like a Cozy Shack brand chocolate pudding. I had that. She's still talking about food. The fixation this woman has on food, I mean, it's hospital food. I'm not going to crap on hospital food. But do you see the detail that she's going into talking about food, even hospital food? Her fixation on food is insane. She'll talk in detail over and over again about fast food. She'll talk about hospital food. In her videos, she will reminisce about food that she ate as a kid. Like she is, com you know, the reason why your marriages don't work, foodie, why your relationships don't work, because you are already involved with food and you are ever faithful to it. You won't break away from it. That was really good. And like, how can anybody get into your heart when your heart is located in your stomach? That's where your heart is located, in your stomach. And um, BB was like, do you want anything? You know, but I just really, I should have probably eaten more things because I was on such a cocktail of pills that are hard on the stomach, like anti-inflammatories. But I just didn't want to. I didn't want to go there, you know? So... I'm trying not, I, I got my prescriptions filled. I'm taking the antibiotics for the C. difficile. That's important. I'm on naproxen, which is an anti-inflammatory you take every 12 hours. I'm on something for the stomach. Mm. This is the... Uh, Pantoprazole. Pantoprazole. Okay, so we're going to move forward a little bit. She's just talking about her medication. Okay, next. So I have my tripods coming. I'm excited about that. 
Um, yes, I am using a green eggs and ham Dr. Seuss book as a leverage. Please return my book. This book belongs to, and then it doesn't say who it is. I don't know where I skeeved this from. <laughs> I think it's mine. Don't you guys love this? I am Sam. Sam, I am. Are you Sam? Green eggs and ham. No thanks. <laughs> I'm going to have my tea now. Let me try this. Mm. Horror. It's more of a story time kind of game. It is a little spooky. I think you. Okay, so she's pretty much done here, but like we got like a few more minutes, like five more minutes. But I really wanted to do this, you know, like going back to the time machine situation. And I think it's relevant given Chantal's current content. I wanted everybody who's not familiar with her history, perhaps even new Beezers, that there's certain things they can't see on her channel because it's not there anymore. Like to see the history, the fact that she does not care about her health at all she used to care a little bit she doesn't care anymore she is resigned to her fate whatever that may be whatever might happen she does not care she could care she could turn things around if she wanted to she's not interested I just want to see i want to just let you guys see the contrast of when she first started her channel her attitude then her personality then versus now once upon a time, there was a person called Chantal Marie. That was the person who created the channel. But that person no longer exists. It's just a persona. The persona took over. The addictions took over. The obsession with the money took over. And here we are. And if there's anything that anybody can learn watching Foodie is basically, in a nutshell, in my opinion, she's a walking cautionary tale of what a life could become if you don't care about yourself or love yourself. If you live your life with no restriction whatsoever, if you live your life completely impulsively, this is what could happen. So she might just be a cautionary tale for those who want to be cautioned. And with that said, I'm gonna end this video and I hope you guys enjoyed this react. And if you have, please like and subscribe and leave a comment. And thank you very much for being here and have a wonderful day. Bye now.